Hey there, today we're gonna start completely from scratch with an empty Git repo and make a web server written in Go. It'll even have a few bells and whistles like safe shutdown and routing based on path and request method. So let's get started. Before I started recording, I created a new repo and here it is, you can check it out on github.com. I'll put a link in the description. The first step is to clone the repo using VS Code. I'm just gonna use the built-in tools for this. Just enter the name of your repo. Eventually it'll start auto-completing. Then it'll ask you where you want to clone to. Just pick the directory and it will make another folder inside that directory. So you don't have to actually create the directory uh, where it'll land finally. And then just choose to open it. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and initialize a Go module. Just type go mod init and then the URL of your GitHub repo minus the HTTPS. That'll create a go.mod file. The next thing to do is to create the app directory. This will house all of the logic that is specific to this application. Inside the app directory, we're gonna create the main.go file. Let's go ahead and name this package main. Now I think a lot of people usually start by creating the function called main, but I'm gonna start um, at the top and kind of work my way down. The first function we're gonna create is called new router, and this function returns the multiplexer, which contains all the information about the routes and the functions that get called when the routes are invoked. I'm using the Go package called HTTP router, uh, which is great for this sort of thing. It's just a little bit better than the built-in Go uh, multiplexer. It has a few bells and whistles, like the ability to create your routes by specifying not just the path, but also the method. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and type Go mod tidy, which will actually add the HTTP router module to the go.mod so the application recognizes that it exists and the autocompletes will work. And now we're going to declare the multiplexer. I'll add the documentation for HTTP router and the links in the description. The next step when using HTTP router after you create the multiplexer is to call a function on the multiplexer variable. And in this case, I'm using git. There are many other functions available on here that are all related to uh, things that you would find on a, on a REST uh, service. So delete, git, head, options, patch, post, put, you know, you get the point. No matter which function you choose, they take two different arguments. The first one is the path, which is pretty straightforward. And the second one is the function that it's going to call when that path gets matched. Now, the handler function is a little confusing, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. Um, the function called get channel stats here returns an HTTP router dot handle, which is a type that's, that's declared by HTTP router. If you look at the documentation for that, you'll see that this type is a function and the function has the signature that you see there. So what I'm doing is I'm creating the function called get channel stats and I'm declaring that it returns an HTTP router dot handle and then I'm returning a function which matches that signature. Either way, all of this is to be said that this function and everything that happens inside of the func on line 18 is what actually happens when a user visits that path. And we will be manipulating the response after looking at the request and also looking at the HTTP router parameters, which are, again, going to be information that have to do with the path that the user has visited and things like that. All right, now it's finally time to make the main function. Inside of main, the first thing we're going to do is create a variable that holds a reference to the HTTP server. Uh, HTTP.server is built in and part of Go. Uh, this uh, specific type has two different, has, well, it actually has several uh, different properties that you can add to it, but the two that we're going to add are the address and the handler. The address is going to be a optional IP address and, uh, and port number. I'm only going to add a port number here so it'll listen on all IPs. And then the second one is the handler. And for the handler, we would just type in new router, which again is referencing the function above on line 9. The next step is to start the server. Um, I'm putting all of this in an if statement that uh, essentially says we're going to start the server. So SRV, which was declared on line 25, dot listen and serve, which is telling the application to start 
the server and, and listen. Um, one thing to note here is that when you close down the server, as in like you're done using it, it will return an error. So the next bit of functionality we're going to do is we're going to catch if it is that specific shutdown error and then not uh, freak out about it. This bit of code inside the if statement is saying if the error that we receive from listen and serve is not a error server closed, which means it was naturally closed, then we are going to kill the application and log a fatal error. If the type is error server closed, we're just going to move on. At this point, technically, we do have a functional web server. It won't return anything, but it should start up. Don't forget that leading slash. All right, so now that we know that it starts up, uh, let's go ahead and add something uh, that it can return to the browser. So what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna update W, which is the response writer, and we're going to call the write function, uh, which accepts a slice of bytes. Um, essentially, you can just put a string in here and then and then cast it. All right, let's start it up and try it out. Copy the path, go over to the browser, uh, use the port number that we declared at the beginning, and we should get a response. Success. Okay, so now we have a, a working server but I think it's probably important to round this out a little bit. Um, in the real world, if you're creating a web server that you intend on running in production, um, this server on its own won't work very well. And for the main reason is that when you shut this down and you send an interrupt to it, it will immediately shut down. Um, if you have a long running process or you have uh, thousands of connections sitting on this thing that are that are being processed at the time, it will truncate all of them and immediately shut down. So what we're going to do next is we're going to set this up to gracefully shut down, meaning that when an interrupt is sent to it, it will make sure to drain all of its connections and then properly shut down the server and then return that it has completed. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm creating a channel and the, the channel is just of type struct. That channel will be used later on to tell the application that everything has finished. On line 35, we're creating a function that is inside of a Go routine. If you're not familiar with Go routines, essentially anything after the keyword Go is going to run asynchronously. That means that this information is going to run in the background and we're going to continue everything below it. So what I'm doing here, making another channel to receive signals from the OS. On lines 38 and 39, I am using the signal package to tell the system to notify that channel on OS interrupt or syscall sig term. And then on line 40, the little arrow and then sig int means we're going to wait. At that point, this, this go routine is going to wait until sig int gets sent something, and then it will continue. So on line 42, um, it says service interrupt received, and that is what would happen after a service interrupt is sent to this application, meaning this is the start, the shutdown sequence that we're running through now on lines 45 through the end of this go funk. We're going to set up a context on line 46, uh, which has the capability of cancellation. And we're going to defer the cancellation. And then we're going to call the shutdown function on the server variable that we created up top on line 32. We pass in the context. And in this case, we're going to catch an error just in case the shutdown fails and say HTTP server shutdown error and, and print that error. Uh, this rarely ever happens, though. After the shutdown completes, we're just going to print to the logs that the shutdown is complete. And then we're going to close the channel idle connections close that we created up top on line 37. That will end the go routine. And now we'll go to the bottom of the function and we'll say when idle connections close returns, that means that everything has successfully shut down and we're just going to simply pr print a message saying that the service was stopped successfully. Now we should be able to start the server 
on the command line below. And then I'm going to issue a shutdown and we'll see that it rolled through all the steps that are necessary. It detected the service interrupt, it did the shutdown, and then it stopped the service. So all of this is working correctly now. I'm just gonna do a little bit of cleanup here and add a log up top before we call listen and serve so we can log that the server is actually started. Otherwise, it uh, doesn't really give you a lot of details on what's going on. And then we'll run through another startup and shutdown again. Much better. And again, just refresh the page and everything's still working. Now we do shut down, try again, and the server is gone. All right, that's how you create a web server with Go.